So in this video, I'm going to talk a bit about atomic energy levels, which you might also know as shells. So I'm going to talk a bit about the different energy levels that exist in an atom and how electrons can occupy different energy levels in different circumstances and what leads atoms to emit photons. So, first thing is some key terminology. So there's three kinds of state an electron can be in. So the first one is called ground state. And this is the lowest possible energy state in an atom. And it's, if it's the lowest energy, that means it's the most stable. And this is very close to the nucleus, and it's the lowest possible energy level, so the closest shell, effectively. Um, this is often called n equals 1, where the n is the quantum number. It's just a notation for the shells. It's nothing complicated. So ground state is known as n equals 1, and where n is the quantum number. The next kind of state is a slightly higher energy state, so it's slightly further away from the nucleus, and this is known as an excited state. So the electrons gain some energy from somewhere else, and it moves to a higher energy level. And this makes it more unstable, because it's a higher energy. And these excited states, and there are several of them, um, go from n equals 2 to n equals 7. And these quantum numbers match with the rows on the periodic table. So you'll see there are seven rows on your periodic table. That matches up with these seven quantum numbers. The last state you have to know about is the ionized state. This is when electrons actually got enough energy to escape from an atom and go it alone, essentially. And so the quantum number for this state is known as um, n equals infinity, or the infinite quantum state. Because uh, it's actually not attached to the atom anymore, it's infinitely far away from it. So that's the key terminology you're going to be using, so let's move on. So now we need to start thinking about how electrons can transition between these different energy states. So whenever an electron in an atom gains some energy, it's going to move to a higher energy level or it's going to become excited. And if it gains enough energy, it will become ionized. Um, but as I said, that actually makes it become more unstable. So stuff in the universe is always trying to become more stable. So a process called de-excitation occurs to move it back to a stable state. So what happens is the electron moves down energy levels, but to conserve energy, it emits the, the, a photon with the energy that it's lost. So if it moves from n equals 3 to n equals 1, for instance, it will emit a photon of energy equal to that transition. So we still maintain the conservation of total energy. Now, just a side note at this point, some of the de-excitations have actually been given special names. And that's just to celebrate some of the famous researchers in the field. So... These three guys are Bulmer, Lyman and Passion, did a lot of research in the field of quantum mechanics. So they've been honoured with it by naming something after them. So they're not quite as great as Planck, so they haven't got a constant or like, you know, James Watt, so they don't have a unit, but they've got a de-excitation. How exciting is that? So the Bulmer emission is any de-excitation that goes down to n equals 1. So it can go be going from ionised, four, five, wherever, but it ends up at n equals one. Lyman is any de-excitation that ends at n equals two. And passion is any de-excitation ending at n equals three. So just a note at this point, we often represent atoms with what they call the energy level diagram. So it is a very simple one. So the lowest energy state would be n equals 1, and we have ascending energy states like this. So let's say we've got currently got an electron at n equals 4. So the Bulmer emission would be if it goes directly down to n equals 1. The Lyman emission would be if it goes from there to n equals 2, and the Passion emission would be if it goes down to n equals 3. So there's no set reason that the photons take a given, make an en given energy transition. All of these transitions could possibly occur. And so if you have a large number of the excited atoms, you get all of these different 
photon energy is emitted, which is why you get a range of different wavelengths given off by different atoms. Okay, so that's that. So let's actually have a look at how you can calculate the energy at these given levels. So there is a fairly simple equation that allows you to calculate the energy that an electron has at a given quantum level. So that's what this equation is saying. So it's saying the energy at a quantum level n is calculated using the ionization energy, that's right up here on the top line, EI, and the quantum number squared. That's on the bottom line, and it has a minus sign because all the energies that it has are negative. Now, if you want to understand why they're all negative and where this equation comes from, you will need to look into some circular motion and Coulomb's uh, law equations, which are in the A2 course. So feel free to do that. I've posted many such videos on those topics as well. But let's move on and stick with what you will see in the AS type course. So in terms of um, key mistakes, uh, very often when people are doing this calculation, they forget to put the minus sign in, which actually causes a problem when you're doing the calculation. So do remember to put that in and do remember to square your quantum number. Again, quite a common mistake. The last mistake people often forget to make is converting their energies into joules, the SI unit of energy. Make sure if you're using it in an equation, it's in SI units. So both of these energies should be joules where a quantum number doesn't have a unit, so you don't, don't worry about that, and it's an integer. So let's have an, an example of this being used. So we've got a nitrogen atom, and it has ionization energy of 14.6 MeV. Calculate the energy of a photon emitted when an electron de-excites from n equals 3 to n equals 1. So the first stage with these is to calculate the energy at each of those states because from there you can calculate the difference between them. So let's put in the minus sign. So we've got the energy at the moment, it's in MeV, so we're going to need to convert it first to electron volts, and then convert it into joules using the conversion factor. And at 3, so that's going to be 3 squared, that's the calculation for that, and you end up with minus 2.59 yada 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 times 10 to the minus 13 joules. In terms of calculating the energy at quantum level 1, we're going through pretty much the same process, except we're going to change the bottom line to reflect that we're looking at n equals 1 and then so we're going to have 1 squared on the bottom line and this comes out at something slightly different it comes out as minus 2.08 yada 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 times 10 to the minus 12 joules so we need to calculate the change in energy so we always do when you calculate the change in anything, you always do the final state minus the initial state. This works for any area of science. We always calculate a change, the final minus the initial. So it de-excites from E3 to E1. So the final state would be at E1. And then the initial state would be at E3. And if you do that calculation, you end up with the number minus 2.08 times 10 to the minus 12 joules. So we haven't quite finished the question yet. So this is the change in energy of the electron. So the energy of the photon must be equal to that. So the loss in energy of the electron is equal to the gain in energy of the photon. So that, that means the photon energy, so we often we'll just call that HF because that's how it's calculated, would be the opposite of that. So that's where we get a positive number and you, all your photons will have positive energy because both frequency and Planck's constant are always positive and you'll end up with this value like this. So here is that all typed out so you can see that in case you couldn't read anything that I was writing. Um, so just remember, just a quick recap what we're doing, we 
we calculated the energy at each of the given levels using the equation that I showed you earlier, remembering to convert into joules on the top line. You might notice here that I've taken a slight shortcut because I know to convert from mega electron volts to joules, it's just 1.6 times 10 to the minus 13. So something you can think about doing. Calculating the change, so it's the final state minus the initial state, and then the photon energy would be the opposite of that. So if this is a minus, this would end up being a positive number.